guys. So today I want to introduce you guys to three of the most common parasites I see in practice that you've probably met before but just haven't known it. Uh, and why, whether or not you have pets, you should care about them. So we'll start talking about fleas. I have so many people come into my office with an itchy cat or dog and say, no, he doesn't have fleas. We don't get those. Not a big deal. I wish that were true. 99% of the time it's not true. Fleas love the Northwest. We're always the right climate. We always have the right humidity. So even if you have an indoor cat, you can carry flea eggs in on your shoes and they can get them. Every animal's at risk. Now, you can't see this very well, but what you might not notice are the fleas. You may notice the flea dirt, which is just flea poop. It looks like little bits of dirt right by the hair follicle. They've had a good blood meal, and they've kind of let it back out there. You may also notice tapeworms if you happen to be looking at your pet's under tail area, which maybe you are. Um, humans can get the tapeworms as well just by being in contact with the flea or your pet. You may also get bites. Fleas can still spread plague, and they do in a lot of countries. Um, you can get blood parasites as well. But if you have a flea infestation in your animal, this is what your carpet looks like. These are all flea eggs and flea larvae. Fleas only spend 5% of their life cycle in the adult phase, and they lay 100 eggs a day. They roll right off your pet and into your carpet and stay there for two months till they hatch again. So you need to treat both the environment and your pet. And there are a bunch of good products out there to do that. Talk with your veterinarian about which one is right for you, your family, and your pet. But whatever you do, do me a huge favor and don't buy anything that has permethrin in it. Permethrins, A, don't work very well, and B, are extremely neurotoxic, especially to cats. I've had several die from administration with flea collars, baths, bombs, dips. Just don't do it. There's better stuff. So here are cute puppies. This is the best part of my job. <laughs> cute puppies, except two to three of them are badly infested with roundworms or hookworms. <laughs> Still cute. Not so healthy. These are roundworms. We call these the big spaghetti worms, not to ruin pasta for any of you. But in dogs and cats, these guys can grow to such size that they can actually cause a fatal obstruction in the intestines or serious malnutrition that leads to secondary infections. Uh, basically, the typical sick puppy you think of is really skinny on top, big fat belly. They're literally full of worms. So you need to make sure that every six to eight week old animal you bring into the office you immediately get them tested for parasites. Ignore most of this diagram. What you need to know is puppies and kittens can get these through the placenta, through their mother's milk, or by eating them off the ground. This is roundworms again. People get these by eating them off the ground. Mainly it's kids who are making mud pies and having an awesome time. But what happens in people is the eggs hatch in your intestine, the larvae begin migrating through your organs. So these are actually worms in people's eyeballs. They can end up anywhere. This hurts a lot. We have about 10,000 cases a year here, many more elsewhere. This huge scary thing is a hookworm. He takes these nasty little hooks, sinks them right into his host's intestine, and begins sucking tremendous amounts of blood, enough to cause a life-threatening anemia, or again, obstructions, malnutrition, all the stuff you already heard about. But the difference is, dogs and cats get these by eating the eggs or larva. We get them by walking around barefoot, and the larva migrate into our skin, and begin traveling underneath your skin. It basically looks like a traveling rash. So these red lines are worms. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but they can travel anywhere. It happens more the further south you go. We have them here. But um, you know, certainly the southern states have more. So where do you get these guys? You get them from the sandbox, the beach, city parks, your own backyard, anywhere an animal has been pooping. You can even get them from your dog rolling in the park. Then you go and pet him and maybe have a bite of your sandwich. You've exposed yourself to larvae and eggs. You can also get them from raccoons, which we can't do a lot about, but please, please, please never feed a raccoon in your backyard. You're asking for a much worse strain of roundworms that's normally fatal. And try to wear shoes. Keep your kids from eating dirt. Um, <laughs> But there are a lot of good preventatives. There's no reason now that you can't prevent fleas and worms from attacking your animals. If you don't want to do that, you can deworm them regularly, but talk with your veterinarian about what's right for your animal and your family. Um, and basically, I was feeling very passionate when I wrote this, but it's your responsibility if you have a pet to make sure for their sakes, your family's sakes, and your community's sake that you keep them free of parasites. The other thing I should have added was, again, wash your hands after you touch animals uh, before you eat food. So if you guys have any questions, here's all my contact info. Sorry to gross you out, and thanks so much.